Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. I got five habits that you're doing in your EDC that's either wasting your time, but most likely wasting your money. Let's jump right into these because I found myself doing these top five things that are costing me money within my EDC. And I have learned over the years to remedy them, to, to bring myself in a little bit. The first one, I think we all know about, it's carrying too much, whether that's on your person, in your bag, in a pouch, in your vehicle. My everyday carry is built off of a primary, secondary, tertiary type of carry. Primary are the things that literally touch my body. The knife that I have on me for the day, maybe if I have a flashlight on me or something like that, Maybe even if I have something on me, like a, a wallet, a watch, that's the primary. I'm okay with that being so forth and so on. Then I have a secondary. Let me show you that. That's normally something like my pouches, right? So I may have an EDC pouch that doesn't go with me every single day. This is my EDC pouch I grab every now and again, just in case I'm going to be gone for an extended amount of time. Stuff in there that kind of used to be in my pocket, I've learned to kind of put into a pouch and grab it when I think I'm going to need it. So I might have some chapsticks, some tweezers, a lighter, multi-tool. Some of this stuff used to literally live in my pockets and I was carrying too damn much. Now I can choose to leave this home or let this be the only item I bring with me. Also, I have a premium pouch, which I like to use all the time. This normally lives on my desk. This is a Nutsack Double Admin pouch. The thing about this bad boy is I don't need this every single day. And I was finding myself carrying some stuff every day that I had little to no use for. Cigar cutters, battery banks, things that are part of my EDC for the next six months, three to six months, but I don't need them every single day. And what that really taught me was, is that I can get away with not always carrying everything on me at all times. I think in everyday carry, we get on YouTube University, we watch people like me or other creators, and you're like, ha, huh, I'll buy that too. Add it to my kit immediately. And then you realize that you don't need it. Here's the thing. If you carry too much stuff, there's a high likelihood you can do a number of things. Spend too much money. Yeah, I get that. But you can also do things like I've done in the past. I've cracked screen protectors from having too much stuff in my pockets. I bogged down bags. I've made my family waste time because I'm taking so much time kind of gather my EDC. They're sitting out in the SUV. I'm inside gathering a pocket protector. Okay, so sometimes bringing in how much you carry not only may save you money, it may save you time and save you a couple of arguments. Number two, not learning your gear or training with your gear. You, if you don't learn your gear, train with your gear, you're not gonna realize the full potential of what you already have on your person all the time. This is the Gerber Dime. I was last week years old when I learned that the Gerber Dime actually has a pair of tweezers on them. I didn't know that. I didn't know that literally in this little area here, there are tweezers that I can grab, use, get splinters out of a kid's hand, grab some stuff that falls between seats, get my emergency cash out of my keychain, all sorts of little things. But what I ended up doing is I was duplicating effort. I was finding myself buying a Victorinox Swiss Army knife because most of those, if not a good chunk of those, include tweezers. And I already had it in a tool implement, meaning that you may not know because you didn't learn your gear that you have something and then you waste money. Secondarily, you may not know how to use an item. You don't train with it. You're not dry firing your gun. You're not using it enough. And now you have this thing on you that you're not fully capable of using. And that not only can waste your time, but that can also cost you your safety, et cetera, et cetera. You need to do things like learn your items, deploy your knife. I've had knives before. This is a fantastic knife. This is by TRM, the shadow. I got this thing, crossbar lock work. Absolutely great. My Hogue Deck, on the other hand, their version, they're called the Able Lock, which is their version of a crossbar lock. It wasn't so great. And I didn't know that I need to really work in the detent, get that thing going. And I learned that through repetition over the time and over the years. It took me over a year of carrying the Leatherman free 
P4 to realize that the bottom is a striking plate. And that took from using my gear, learning my gear and using it all of the time. Obviously not knowing the full capabilities of your gear can either cost you money because you go out and buy stuff that you don't need, or it can cost you time. If, if you could have just learned that a long time ago, learn your gear, otherwise you may regret it. Number three, not considering your daily routine. As much as I love making these videos and my prior life as an active duty Marine, you gotta consider your daily routine. My daily routine mostly consists of me working here, my man cave desk. I have a full-time job that keeps me tethered here. Also edit YouTube videos, shorts, TikToks, stuff like that. So generally, I probably can get away with carrying these smaller multi or these smaller utility knives to use like a number 11 utility blade, like my little tiny EDC knife here or a Gerber Fiber at X, a Milwaukee Fastback, something like that, kind of like a box warrior, you know, maybe a cheaper knife under a hundred bucks. I probably don't need the big boy TRM shadow that I talked about earlier. Whereas if you're a paramedic, a first responder, work in a warehouse, you're in forestry, you're in the military still, you don't want to undervalue the actual item that you need. That doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money on it, but you can still waste your time getting something that's not capable. If you need something that has a lot of test strength, something that can actually take a lot of uh, uh, weight or a lot of pressure on the spine of the blade before it gives on the pivot, you might want to make sure that you have a knife that's capable for that. If you need a very powerful flashlight that has a very good spot mode versus having a big old flood mode, you need to know stuff like that. So you need to know your daily routine because it can waste your time and it can waste your money. Here's a good way to think of it. If the item that you have, whether it's because the item is not good enough or the item is overkill, if the item that you have literally goes into your pocket in the mornings and then you do not see that item again until you go to bed or until you wrap it up at the end of the night, that might be an indicator that you're not considering your daily routine or that item doesn't fit into your daily routine and you might be wasting your time or your money. Number four, I'm guilty of this. I've done it several times, creating an EDC surrounded around a particular theme, a color, a material like brass, copper, or G10. Maybe you want it to be after a theme of something like you love the Denver Broncos, you're just a big Star Wars head or whatever. What I've realized is I spend so much time researching, saving money, purchasing these items, buying the items, that one or two components within that kit doesn't work for me full time. For instance, I built an entire EDC out of G10. I got a G10 pin from Bastion. I had a G10 wallet from Travax. Of course, I got tons of G10 knives, et cetera, et cetera. Thought it was awesome, thought it was great. Realized that the actual Bastion pin was entirely too light for my writing style. So I love the aesthetics, but I didn't use the pin as much as I thought that I would. Conversely, I built an entire kit of brass. Had a brass flashlight from Olight, same old story. Realized that carrying a brass knife was not my forte, it was a little heavy. So. I'm not saying don't build, don't waste your time building an entire kit around a theme, but I don't think it should be one of the first things that you do. As you grow into EDC, it may be a time saver that you that you don't do initially at the beginning. It may waste your time, it may, it may waste your money. And I think that you do have an opportunity to do it. And I'm not saying never do it, but don't do it initially at the beginning because I think it could be something that wastes some of your precious moolah. Number five, and this might be one of the most important ones that I took a while to realize over the years is focusing on the brand name versus quality. There are so many micro brands or cheaper brands that we just totally avoid because we have this perceived notion that the brand name is automatically better two reasons why that might not necessarily be true. Number one, one of my biggest headaches in my mo one of my most expensive knives is the Benchmade Mini Freak. It's a nice looking knife, has fantastic steel S90V, carbon fiber scales, but this thing gives me headaches all the time. The pivot screw backs out all the time. I'm always having to retighten it. 
the blade didn't come completely centered. Now this might be anecdotal. I'm not saying that everyone's mini free gives them these type of issues, but it took a while to work this thing in and it's cost a significant amount of money. Where I've gotten knives from Savivi, from Kubi, from Remit, all sub $100, all hitting it out the park because I wasn't focused on the brand. A lot of us will jump in an opportunity to get something from a brand because we've heard so much about it. Chris Reeve, whatever, zero tolerance, maybe something protect, something pops up that you've just been creaming after for a very long time. And then you may end up wasting a lot of your time and effort into that. And it's not a good habit to only focus on brands. Conversely, talking about pricing or brands, growing up, all I knew was Buck, Case Knives, and Leatherman. Those are the things that rang true for me, especially me coming from the hood in East Cleveland, Ohio. So some of the first knives I got were very, very cheap buck knives that just weren't that great. They weren't made in America. Heat treatment wasn't that good. I thought I was Gucci because I got the brand buck. I spent less than $50, but it wasn't that good. So either end of the totem pole, spending too much, spending too little, all because I was laser focused on the brand. Sometimes you can find a banger of a deal if you just expand your mind and not let yourself fall into the habit of sticking to a brand. Put something down below. What is a habit with an EDC that may cost you time or money? I didn't name a specific item per se or brand per se or thing per se, kind of just something that surrounds EDC. You might even be able to take this into account for other parts of your life that may waste your time or money. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you part of the battalion. If you're already subscribed to the channel, I'm not talking to you. I appreciate you once again stopping by and watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.